Yeah. You just do it once to make sure you finish the section. Okay. So I just add these five. What was your week? Good. It was alright. No one suffered to fall in the trees. It's good. Um, I noticed about three homework submitted by email. Are there any in uh, print submissions? Okay. Uh, if um, maybe I missed some some emails that were going on while I was coming here, because that was just the YouTube videos, right? Just emailing you the videos and a couple of snapshots of um, of the images with explanations. Oh. oh, I did not. I I, didn't uh, that I just did the I just, I just did the video. Sorry. No, no, not, not a problem. Not a problem. It, it, it's like I don't know, five ten minutes. Okay, I'll just do it later. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So who we are and what are we doing? Waiting until the Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> Getting suffering at, at, as less as possible. Uh, there is, it is a course of physical chemistry. You want to predict outcomes of uh, experiments and measurements from instruments. And we take into account wave wave nature of uh, electrons that has some quantum laws, and then we are applying these quantum laws to ascertain whether of uh, systems in, in level of complexity. Because if we do something realistic, it will be not possible from from uh, scratch. So right now we are what what are we considering? For, for which system? One for box, right? Yeah. And is this uh, box, what is the initial state? You can tell us what was the initial state of the particle in the box. <laughs> so what was the initial state? Question to you: What was the initial state? Our oh. initial state of particle in the box that we are considering in class and in homework. Oh, in the center box. Okay, and if you uh, it, it is if you speak about uh, distribution space, and if you speak on language of uh, quantum states, was it either one of eigenstates or uh. not? What was specific about uh, the problem that we are solving for the way we homework and in couple of lectures to class? So there are two answers. Was it an eigenstate or not? It is. It is an eigenstate. Or not? I think it is. Okay, who is that uh, initial state for the problem we are solving was an eigenstate? Who is raise your hand? One. <laughs> uh, I specifically like what you, you what you give you. Raise the hand who is that it was second state. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who will vote that it was not an second state? One, two, three, four. Okay, majority. It was not an second state. Which one is like smaller? Right? Huh? Once the box is we're kind of talking about like the box getting smaller at the same range. No, no, no. That, the, those are two different things. Oh. The, there is one that how the energy of the state depends on the size of the box, right? The smaller the box, the higher the energy. And uh, historically, everyone is getting very happy and, and getting this idea very quickly. But now we are coming to the second idea. What if we are looking for non stationary for dynamics? And if we take initial state as the Eigenstate 
it's boring, there will be no dynamics. Because from postulates, if an uh, isolated system is created in one of the eigen states, it will stay there forever. So they're looking what will happen if the system is not in the eigen state. But it is in, uh, initial state is summation of two eigen states. So it's, uh, it, it is a solution, but it is not an eigen state, right? So more specifically, what was the initial state? <laughs> Which uh, quantum states of uh, par particle in the box you know? Or if, if you need to, uh, I don't know if, if there is a like, cumulative or oral cumulative exam, if, if there will be general knowledge check if someone asks you, which quantum states do you know? And you can, you can answer very generally. There is a general answer that you feel in any circumstances. It, it, it does exist for any system. Lowest energy. Sometimes it is not one. Sometimes there is more than one electron. But it, huh? equilibrium, or there is a uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> so ground ground state. <laughs> and uh, if the eigenstate is not ground, how we can refer to it? Excited. Yes, <laughs> and we take ground and first and the lowest possible excited state, and then we prefer system in superposition of those, so they are like 50-50 composed of, of both of them, and then we are following what will be the um, dynamics in time, how things will propagate. Right. So it is what you were thinking all the weekend and, and memorizing, and oh yeah, I like to predict future of that. Superposition of states. Oh, okay. And how were we solving this problem? Which of the uh, ways to predict future we were using? Schrodinger's Schrodinger's. Mm -hmm. Time uh, dependent expansion of our eigen states. Okay. Um, for wave functions, uh, wave function is trivial. You just write one line. But wave functions are not uh, you cannot observe. And we need either to target something that is potentially observable, like probability distribution, or exactly observable, some uh, that can be measured in the experiment. Uh, we postpone uh, any observables and just focus on probability distribution, which is wave function squared. So did you remember any new information from uh, Friday? Mm -hmm. Which color? It is uh, symbolized using this diagram. Huh? Do you see this uh, method? Huh? Red? Yes. <laughs> there are two reds, so probably the far, far right red, top right red. So, what is density matrix and why it is helpful in uh, predicting future of this uh, superposition state? Can we live without it? Yes, we can. It's uh, it's not nece a necessary concept. It just makes life a little easier. But in which sense? Do you have any feelings or, or memories? So we applied Euler to time dependence, what you're talking about, right? Accumulation of phase. But before that, it's a, it's a tough question. I, uh, I barely answer myself. Uh, so it is a concept that helps to chop solution of the time dependent and, time, uh, and space dependent parts. And it, it is just uh, is more organized. We can get quicker to the answer. And you already know the answers from your movies, 
right? So the uh, and we, we were looking at the movies in, in class as well. So this distribution changes having uh, maximum either more to the left or more to the right. And in very approximate way, it uh, corresponds to classical particle bumping into the wall, reflecting reinforcing that. Right? Make sense? Okay, so uh, you already done this main message of today's meeting, and I will try just to uh, add a little bit more details. But uh, if you agree with the statement and uh, you feel that it's a good idea, you can go back and relax. So it is a summary of uh, things that we already discussed, right? So there is a ground, which is um, camel is uh, single count, and excited is camel is two count. And uh, it is a superposition involved. And we look to see how the probability distribution will look if we add them together and if it is allowed to go forward in time. So um, the it is always very not confusing, but it's it's a source of film bored and a big temptation to fall asleep and skip everything because I remember myself. It always looks like uh, B models discussed in class are very far from real life. Why should I spend time focusing on them? And uh, the uh, connection of this uh, model to the real life, uh, it is something that we were discussing, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, your busy schedules washed out memories about this. So uh, particle in the box is a uh, model for conjugated oligomers, right? Or for two dimensional thin films of semiconductors. They look directly in semiconductor between them. So this is sun that creates excited state. And uh, electron hole can move between these walls. So this, uh, the problem that we are solving is very far related to like, photovoltaic panels. Not directly, but there is some relation. And this is the thing that, that we are doing. So we are finding the distribution that, that we need for the distribution as products of the uh, spatial part and the time part. Where those distributions are orbitals that uh, are which trigonometric functions? Sine of sine. Huh? Sign in for our selection of boundary conditions. If you select boundary condition from minus uh, L over half over two to L over two, then it will be cosine. It doesn't matter, the interchangeable depends on the source. But in our system of uh, coordinates, lots of signs. And uh, this uh, time dependent part is often referred to as density matrix, and it is composed of the uh, initial expansion coefficients, which were selected in our case as uh, one of the square root of two, right? Doesn't surprise you. And the accumulation of phase, so since this object focuses and tracks together two orbitals, right? There are two indices, two initial expansion coefficients, and two energies. So it accumulates not the phase of a single orbital, but it tracks the phase difference, difference between two orbitals. And we will see uh, later if uh, 
v if this is coincide, then uh, phase difference will be will be zero. No phase accumulation. If they are different, then there will be the same uh, some phase accumulation. Next year we well not yes, when back and back and forward, but next year probably it will be a right place to make a little twist to remember this equation. Okay. Which I have no doubt you are right. So energy of state uh, is inversely proportional to size of the box squared and the number of states. So let's practice. I think I'm going to click into the mission So if you practice this expansion and uh, our indices, uh, our indices i goes from one to two and, and, and j runs from, from one to two, then total number of terms will be four, right? And uh, here we do have the Time dependent part, and here we have a uh, spatial part. Right? So, products of, uh, of orbitals. If it is the first orbital, it will be um, this single hum canyon square. If it is um, excited state, it will be double hum canyon square. And if it is um, cross terms, all diagonal terms, it will be products of the sine of the x and the dx. Right? So the time accumulation will be <coughs> trivial for ground and excited because energy is subtracted. Right? And if the energies are different, then uh, one cannot uh, cancel. There is a phase accumulation. If you do not have computer, do you feel comfortable to plot this? Uh, but uh, do you think you can simplify it? So that one can plot it and uh, avoid using computer, like right? doing the stuff that you did in the uh, lab and uh, in homework without any computer, just uh, getting general. So our um, what I'm not super organized today. What is the goal? What is the purpose that you want to achieve today? You already know that the answer is the distribution of food packet that uh, kind of bumps into left and right wall. And, and performs oscillations. We did it in um, simulation, but we wanted to get the same result just by plan of it. We want to see that as time goes by, there, there will be uh, maxima leaning towards left, towards right, or, or staying approximately in, in, in center. So if you get these uh, functions, the goal for today's meeting will be achieved. Okay? And, um, Basically, this function should give us this result. It is just a, a lot of discomfort to, to plot it. Mm, I'm not seeing it immediately, but maybe there are some manipulations to simplify it. So what is mostly irritating in this uh, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Exponent, and especially that exponent is imaginary. I was going to joke that most irritating of this expression is this expression itself. <laughs> necessity to look at it. And um, do you see any errors in, in uh, or typos? I don't. Let's just double check it. There is minus and minus here, but the orders of uh, indices are swapped here. I just for a second started to be confused because if one keeps the same thing in the bracket, then we need to swap the, uh, the same. Okay, so the 
energy here is uh, the same by absolute value. And if I'm lazy, I can call it like uh, delta E, minus delta E here and plus delta E here. Is there any difference? Do we see any difference between this spatial part and this spatial part? So it looks like you can take it out of brackets, right? And then add together these two exponentials. So it is basically what we discussed on Friday, to, uh, what Kristen mentioned uh, under density matrix is connected to Euler. Okay. So if we uh, add together these two exponentials, then by Euler we should get um, what? If there is a plus between them, it will be cosine. If minus, it will be sine, right? You agree, you don't need to put this. If you do, give me a little sign. No? Okay. Nothing in the Okay, so the cross term, we put uh, this uh, sign x and sign uh, 2x out of brackets, and then we have a summation of two, two exponentials. And they give us a uh, cosine. So for right now, okay, maybe last year I was explaining to someone what, what, what is cosine because this one consists of sine and cosine, and this one consists of sine and cosine, and sines uh, cancel each other. So this uh, stuff simplifies to uh, a sign. And what, so here we, we get rid of exponential to the power zero, right? It's just one half. Where one half is coming from? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. So initial con condition is uh, one over square root of two. And here you have uh, expansion coefficient squared, right? Or one can interpret it. Uh, since it is probability, it's like one half, 50% that it is in ground, 50% that it is in the excited. And those will be like diagonal density, which is easy to interpret by uh, human intuition. But in addition to this, uh, diagonal density, there is a transition density, which is non-zero only if uh, there are superpositions, if system is in the process of going from one state to another one. And uh, Alyssa should be happy about this term, because transition density is a key uh, component of uh, TDDFT. So, regular density, transition density. There is no time dependence here, so it will be some constant uh, terms. And here we have oscillations, a sign of this delta E times time and uh, divide by uh, fun constant. How can we interpret this cosine? What does it mean? How the uh, again, our goal is to plot this expression. If we make snapshots at different point of time, what are snapshots of, of cosine function? Numbers that are limited between which boundaries? Negative one and one. Huh? Negative one and one. Or yes. Yes. So, if we plug in specific value of time, we will get either plus one minus one, zero, or something in, in between, right? And basically, if you take plus minus one, plus, plus one, minus one, and zero, it will be limiting cases. Anything else, uh, we can interpolate just by human brain how to work uh, in between. So basically, what I suggest, we will um, select such values of time, which will bring this cosine function into 
plus one, minus one, or zero. So cosine starts uh, at one and makes full cube. If we just uh, zero when the argument of cosine is by the cube, it is negative from when the argument is pi, and it is sufficient for us. So suppose we focus on the um, argument of cosine equals pi. It means that energy difference divided by one constant multiplied by unknown time will be equal pi. Okay. Can you solve it for t? Okay. This one is equal to pi. So it is right here. So we inverse. Uh, and time will be uh, pi h bar over energy difference. So if time is equal to this um, duration, then uh, a sign that pops up in this expression will make half of this solution. If we have double that, if we put number two here, it will be full oscillation. If I wanted to practice calligraphy and write something uh, reasonable about about this slide, which, which what should be my notes? Especially about this box. So let me formulate the question: Is there any connection between period of oscillatory motion in the system? and energy offset of the levels. Full period with T capital will be equal to pi h bar divided by the equation. Once again, because I'm famous calligrapher, so uh, the question is, is there any connection between period of oscillations and energy of set between levels? Huh? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So uh, any quantum system in superpositional state has its own property to perform oscillations. And oscillations will be very quick if energy of set is big, and will be slow if energy of set is small. Why? I don't know, because you proved it. <laughs> it it's, it's what, what comes from, 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 from here. Because of phase accumulation is proportional to Difference in energies, right? Mm -hmm. So, and f this phase accumulation just through our body Euler gives this cosine oscillations. I, I guess just physically, why would it go slower between ones that are cosine pass, which means that way? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want not explanation but interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, the math is Um, I have engineering explanation that I'll postpone and it is very clear and I'll try to build something that is not quite clear. If two levels are very close, then their oscillation frequencies are very close as well. It means they accumulate phase almost at the same place. In the limiting case, if the frequencies coincide, then there will be no motion at all. Right? As we saw for uh, eigenstate. Or if you, if you put degenerate state, two states of the same energy, their um, 
phase accumulations will, will cancel. There will be no motion at all. And in one case, we have some motion. In another case, we, we, in another case there is zero offset. We have no motion. In the limiting case, it will be slow, very slow motion. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. I cannot say it better. Please repeat. Yeah, I, I, I need to learn that. So, similar. That difference takes longer. It's normal. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, you re-established peace in the audience. <laughs> it takes so long to notice the difference because the frequencies are, are very similar. Okay. Just like okay, physically, right? Like if an electron is tucked in between one thing and the other, like just like moving, wouldn't it take longer time for it to to notice the difference. Versus the, so why? <laughs> so reason of course. Yeah, because like if physically, like if you're if you're thinking about just like a gigantic scale of it, right? You're talking about your energy, like low energy state, high energy state, and the further apart, why does it take more time to go back and forth between them versus when they're smaller? Because it can easily just the energy, like I guess the the activation energy uh, isn't as high. Okay, uh, I want to make a disclaimer, which doesn't literally answer your question, but maybe you will you reformulate your question. Out. What you're doing is far too related to transition to this case. But in fact, what they're doing right now doesn't have any transitions. We do have superpositional state between ground and excited, and proportion 50 50 doesn't change. We're not looking how quick it will jump from how quick it will excite or de excite. It is, uh, I'm, I'm intentionally selecting this um, subject because it, it is very paradoxical for human brain. It's kind of like, well, like simultaneously, yes. Oh, okay. It's kind of like in the box, it's like everywhere. For like an electron cloud, mm -hmm. it's kind of just everywhere. I'm good. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So, um, it's a really um, good take-home message that I was forgetting to highlight as our, our expected outcome of the, of the meeting, but I think it is really important discussion. And, and, and conclusion. So, the period of any motion will be inversely proportional to uh, energy offset. And the motion is motion in space, it is not transitions between, uh, between states. So, superpositional states bring us to uh, occupations on levels that are kept constant, but in uh, Cartesian space, there is, a, there is a motion because it is a non equilibrium state. And this uh, non equilibrium dynamics in Cartesian space is occurring quicker if the energy of set is big and occurring slower if energy of set is small. So let's practice let's practice um, three specific times when argument of, of cosine is equal to 
0, 5 over 2, and 5. And our connection between uh, time I will just invite you one by one to fill the table. Thank you. Yeah. Please come. Please come to the to the board, and, and uh, mm -hmm. the rest can have time to think and uh, prepare. Right. Come here and draw something. So uh, what you can use is we are, yeah. you can try to make some epic face. Okay. <laughs> so how quickly uh, changes, is there any time dependence for row one one for face factor in front of the spatial part for the coinciding for ground state? Can I, can I go back? You can look at your notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you were taken, uh, yeah, please, please, yeah. please go back. Thank you. Then it becomes super. <laughs> so you got it right. Yeah. The answer is you. <laughs> yeah, you, you can go forward. Okay. Yeah. Just, just one cup. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for being great. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know any. You have a uh, right to select the uh, box on the table that looks most simple for you. Go ahead, Alex. So, is there any time dependence for uh, excited state for state number two? Yes or no? Okay. So, what the um, probability to find system in the excited state? If the probability to find in ground state one half, then total probability should be one. Yeah. Super. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, that's difficult. There are four simple questions and then uh, smooth complicated. Is that the right track? Well, uh, it's your process of thinking, but you, uh, I need the answer. So time equals zero. What will be the sign of uh, uh, of zero? Oh, just to look up one sign. So can you just write e plus one? Super. Thank you. Robin. So like with this, this limit add on uh -huh. the rest of it. Yeah, and you can feel a couple of cells more because you already got the trend, right? Trend. Oh, okay, so we got the one half for each of these, right? Uh-huh. You can feel, not here, not here. Not there, but maybe here? Yeah. Okay. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now two tough questions for Kristen and for Alice. Kristen? So uh, we do have a cosine, right. 
And uh, Hasai of uh, such time that will, will give us uh, argument of uh, Hasai of pi over 2. Not argument, but Hasai of pi over 2. So this is cosine of pi over 2. Eventually, yes. Yeah. And we need result. I'm so lazy that I don't want to take this cosine myself. Super, thank you. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, the toughest question. <laughs> Super, immediately, very good. <laughs> so you, you've got the idea, right? So now we are, um, now we are seeing partially, we are partially seeing benefits of the instrument. So the spy, spatial part can be processed once and forever, and we need to focus only on the time dependent part. Also, for some of the elements of density matrix, we see that it is trivial, and we need to focus only on the transition, transition density. So um, anything in between will be like 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and then going to negative, and then repeating the cycle. So if we explore overall expression for probability distribution for these three cases, we will get the figures that eventually will show the same as we did in, in the lab with metal. It will show probability distribution that you bump into left wall, right wall, go forth and back. Good. Okay. We will not finish earlier. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, from year to year, everyone does it correctly. Um, and they did correctly too. <laughs> now, I am writing down the answer in three cases for time equal zero, for time corresponding to phase pi over two, and for time corresponding to phase pi. So for time corresponding to phase zero, it will be uh, sine x squared plus sine 2x squared plus the product of sine x and sine 2x is uh, factor 1. And note that here is 1, here is r one half. If we go to further in time, this term completely disappears. It will be only first two terms, single hump and two hump uh, camels. And if you go to the time corresponding to phase pi, it will be this camels and the cross term with factor minus one. So what I want to do right now is to remember best part of my high school and do trigonometric simplification of first, second, and third lines and see if I can plot, plot them, right, without a computer. It shouldn't be super easy, but it shouldn't be, it should be doable. Because we know how to plot sines, cosines, and squares of those, right? So if I, it is just the same uh, written down. I can also put one half uh, outside, right? And then it is an interesting observation. If we, this one can be considered as x squared if sine uh, of x is equal uh, to a. This can be considered as b squared, and this can be considered as 2a times b. You see it? Here we can see it as a squared plus b squared minus 2a times b. You see it? So it, it will give uh, a little ability to simplify stuff. Okay. So, I will 
I will not uh, go in the most organized way, and I will start from the middle because it is a shorter expression. What is function? What is the uh, trigonometric expression for sine two uh, x? Or um, I do not have verbal strength to repeat about pi over l. Sine of the double argument. Two sines cosines. Two sine x sine x. And then with this knowledge, we can rewrite this uh, term as one half sine x squared plus four sine x squared cosine x squared. Right? I didn't try. And it is credit of you. Well, what should I do with a sine x squared? If I want to simplify my life. Can it be put out of record as a common term? Yeah. This one, this one can go outside. And then we do have one half sine x squared times one plus four cosine x squared. <laughs> okay, so can I plot this function? How do I plot? Uh, probably the. I should, oh, okay, I should have left empty. So, writing once again. Sine x squared one plus cosine plus four cosine x squared. So I want to plot this function. First I can plot sine x squared, which will be if here is uh, my argument. It will be just a hump, right? You agree for half period. It's not time, it is uh, L. It is our um, box. Now, the function cosine square x, if we want to plot this function. How do I put it? So it will be big in here and then approaching zero at the center, right? If you are looking for half years. Almost nothing like this and it goes up. Right? If I want to multiply it by factor four, what should I do? I just write four here. And if I want to um, to, to to add one, yeah, I am telling that my actually axis starts here, right? Yeah. Here is the function. Now, I do have this expression, and I do have this this graph. And uh, finally, I need to multiply them. How do we multiply uh, functions? Graphically, if you do not have computers. Come on. 
What were you doing in high school? My, oh, my high school was a time when computers were too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Oh, for the top one, it's a half period, and the second one is the full one period. So. No, 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 no. The cosine of half period will be minus one, but minus one squared will be one. So it's, uh, oh, oh. we explore it from zero to L. Oh, yeah. So, um, two multiply functions without a computer, I multiply them point by point. And since I'm human, a lazy human, which is natural, I select one of the specific points. Like point zero, I multiply, uh, and here it will be five, right? One plus four. I multiply zero by five, it will be zero. At point L, I multiply uh, zero by five, will be again zero. Point L over two, I multiply one times one, will be one. Okay. So, and in between here, there will be some intermediate humps. So probably there will be something like, like that. Okay. And if I do the same procedure for, for the rest, then one will get these uh, figures. This um, phase equals pi over 2 gives two equal humps. And this uh, phase equals um, corresponds to 0 or pi. It will be leaning towards left or towards right. And anything in between will, will be going forwards and backwards. So, it we went through a lot of counterintuitive things, but now we are hitting human intuition. So we have a like, wave that hits one side, then other side, and oscillates for some back. Right? This run? Well, we, you saw this move. Done. Thanks for the questions and looking forward to seeing you. Wednesday.